What's happening everyone? Jay Shockblast here and check it out. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 is out now exclusively on the Nintendo Switch and with it we have a season pass that can be purchased for $20. They are going to be adding characters and content uh, for quite a while and they've already announced DLC for Marvel Knights, X-Men and Fantastic Four as expansion packs as well as Colossus and Cyclops as playable characters. They are currently NPCs in the game and we will be getting them for free outside of the season pass uh, in August 31st, I believe, or August 30th, uh, at the end of August, either way. Um, so obviously it gets me thinking about 10 characters I'm hoping that we can see uh, as part of the DLC, whether it be free or as part of the expansion passes. Now, when I do lists like this, I try to like focus on characters we haven't seen in games like this before. So for the most part, the characters on this list are going to be characters we haven't seen. And I wanted to focus on characters that weren't already NPCs, uh, but obviously there are uh, a few, possibly, maybe, that are already kind of non-playable in the game that I'd like to get my hands on. I think one of them is pretty obvious, and I think you know where he's going to rank on the list. But alas, let's go ahead and check out my list. At number 10, we have Omega Red. Now, we've seen lots of villains in the X-Men mythos appear in games before, but I don't really feel like we've seen Omega Red. I mean, he might have popped up in a game, a small game or two here or there, but I really would love to see him as a playable character here. I doubt we're going to get him, and this is just probably wishful thinking, uh, as I would expect we're going to see people like Juggernaut and Mystique uh, and maybe even Sabretooth and characters like that, but I'd like to see them dig a little deeper and bring in someone like Omega Red. I know he's not really all that different, per se, than someone like a Sabretooth or Wolverine, but I don't know. He just looks cool, and I'd love to see him play out in the game. So my number 10 is Omega Red. At number 9 on my list, we have Hela. And Hela is obviously not playable in this game. I don't even think you actually fight against her, but she looks so awesome in this game. And honestly, I would love to play as her in this game. It, it just her power set is really cool, you know, throwing daggers everywhere. I just think she'd be a lot of fun to play, and I, I'm almost uh, insulted that they didn't let me at least fight against her uh, as one of the bosses. But no, she has to send the destroyer in there and, and bounce. Uh, and I think she also threw, uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, gosh, I hate blanking in these things. Um, but uh, big dude, um, Surtur. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but I'd love to have at least fought against her. But even more so, I think I would love to see her as one of those characters that's already in the game that they let us play. And I'd you know, even pay for it, but free is cool too. Uh, number eight, we have Blue Marvel. And a lot of people usually think about Sentry or Hyperion as uh, their Superman style characters they'd like to see in this game. And I'm not necessarily saying Blue Marvel is like Superman, but I really like using him in Marvel Future Fight. He was one of the first cool characters that I unlocked and for a while was one of my strongest. And I just think he would be a lot of fun to play in a game like this. I think we had him in the last LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2 game, um, but you know, getting him in a, a more realistic setting uh, would be really cool, and I think he has some really cool powers uh, that would play out really well. He should be able to synergize very well with Captain Marvel or even Black Panther, members of the Ultimates. So I think Blue Marvel would be a really cool character to deep dive into and uh, bring into Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. At number 7, we've got an X-Men DLC, so give me Gambit. I know my boy Remy is going to appreciate that. Gambit is one of my favorite X-Men characters, and I just feel like he is... He's got to be in here. And I've heard rumors that all the characters that have been in Ultimate Alliance before are potentially going to be making it back in. He seems like an obvious choice for the X-Men, and I don't typically like to go with obvious characters, but... I mean, his playstyle has got to be so cool. The effects, the colors, you know, having that kind of energy-based power really plays off well. So I would love to see him get his shot 
here in Marvel Ultra Alliance 3. At number six, we have Angela. And Angela is obviously one of our Asgardian characters. It'd be cool to get another Asgardian in here. I think she has like a really awesome skill set that would really translate well into this. And I don't know, man, like there's just something about her jumping into the Marvel Universe that I've always liked. When they added her in Marvel Heroes Omega, she was like one of my favorite characters. I don't know quite what it is. And I especially loved her 1602 costume. Uh, I have that in both Future Fight and Marvel Heroes Omega. So I'd love to see her make the move over here to Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. I think she'd be perfect. At number five, we have Archangel. And Archangel is, again, one of my favorite X-Men characters. I would probably say he might even be number two right behind Psylocke. And, you know, my boy HBK uh, from my uh, Marvel Strike Force uh, Alliance is a huge Archangel fan. And he made a great point that the skill set is already basically there. You could argue that, you know, Falcon is very much along the lines of what Archangel would be. And there's a plenty of you know costume opportunities, recolor co opportunities. You know, a lot of people don't like it that the skins in the game now are just kind of recolors. But you know, you can have your traditional kind of Archangel costume as your default, and then give him an X Force costume as you know an alternate skin. So that would even be easy. But like, I think he's just a cool character. I love his like metal wings, how they fire out you know, projectiles and stuff like that. I just think he'd be a great character, and I'm always about getting Archangel into these games. At number four, we have Adam Warlock, and quite frankly, I'm surprised we haven't seen Adam Warlock a little bit more in Marvel games, um, and I'm surprised he didn't show up in the MCU, but I really think Adam Warlock would be a great character. Uh, they brought him back again as part of the whole Infinity Countdown storyline. Um, so I'm interested to see what we could do with Adam Warlock. Uh, again, just a really powerful character with energy-based stuff. Uh, definitely somebody I would love to see in the game. So at number four, we had Adam Warlock. At number three, I would even settle for this to be a skin for a character already in the game. But one of the biggest characters to come out in the last year or two is Cosmic Ghost Rider. Frank Castle is the Cosmic Ghost Rider. If you don't know the story, uh, Donny Cates kind of hit a home run with this character. Uh, I thought it would be stupid, but it ended up being really, really cool. And I've really enjoyed seeing how Frank Castle plays out on a cosmic level. The character looks amazing, and I'm really intrigued to see what happens next after the events of Guardians of the Galaxy number seven. So getting Cosmic Ghost Rider in here would be awesome and you know if they had to add him as a outfit for Ghost Rider I guess I'm fine with that but you know as his own character I think he'd be pretty dope and I would definitely rather see him over Robbie Reyes so at number three Cosmic Ghost Rider at number two uh this should be pretty obvious I know I'm probably uh alone on this one uh, but Darkhawk I'm there's no way I'm not gonna advocate for getting Darkhawk into this game you know, I, I, Darkhawk is one of my favorite characters of all time. Uh, he was my first favorite comic book character. Actually, it's kind of a lie. Hawkman, I think, was my first favorite comic book character. But my first comic book that I ever bought was a Darkhawk comic. So I've always been a fan, and I love the fact that he made it into LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 2. And I'm shocked he hasn't uh, made it into more than just Contest of Champions. You know, waiting for him to show up in Future Fight. Strike Force, I don't think he's going to be there anytime soon, but uh, Darkhawk is awesome, man. He's got lots of great powers, energy-based powers, melee powers. He can fly. Just a cool character that I think would translate very well into the game. Give, give my boy Chris Powell a shot, you know? Um, so at number two, Darkhawk. And at number one, we have... The absolute most obvious of choices, Nova. It is such a tease to see how awesome Nova looks as a non-playable character in this game. His character model is already in the game. It literally looks like they ripped him right out of Marvel Heroes Omega. And I'm just such a huge Richard Rider fan. And I think we're gonna get him. 
I think this is really almost a waste of a spot. But I'm going to stand for my boy Rich nonstop. Uh, I think he is just epic level character. And with Annihilation coming back for round two, I'm hoping that he's a big part of that. He's been a big part of the current Guardians run. And I don't know. I'm just really hyped up. I was, like, honestly, I marked out so hard when Nova showed up. I knew the Nova core were in this, and I was kind of expecting them just to use them as, you know, filler fodder characters. But no, they, they made Richie show up pretty well. Uh, I actually, when you, you kind of meet him on Nowhere, and he's just standing there, I like hung out with him for a few minutes and we chatted, but uh, I was not expecting to see him in the cutscenes towards the end. And uh, you know, honestly, um, I'm probably playing the cutscene on a loop right now. Uh, honestly, it was really frustrating because like you trust him to be there in the final battle, but you don't let me fight with him. So. In any event, uh, those are the 10 characters that I would love to see added to Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. I'm sure everybody else has lots of characters they'd like to talk about. So definitely do that in the conversation below. Who would you like to see? They don't necessarily have to be, you know, part of the um, Marvel Knights pack or the X-Men pack or the Fantastic Four pack. I feel like some of these might not fit into any of those but a lot of them would um they might just add characters here and there anyway so i i really hope that we get a lot of stuff uh this definitely scratches a little bit of my marvel heroes omega itch um and just keep the characters coming so uh hope you guys enjoy the video and we'll see you